you'll be hearing this maybe for the first time, that I have co-founded a digital health tech and ed tech startup. I'm the CEO, potentially, of a unicorn, I believe. It's going to be a billion pound, <laughs> but you know, a billion pound um, business. And it's also going to be so impactful for the world. Welcome back to the Ingazi Cadmus show on the Ingazi Cadmus channel. Wow. It has been a long time. Where have I been? It's interesting because I am making videos, not as consistent. So I put my hands up there. I'm not consistent, but the podcast. So those that are listening to my voice, thank you. I'm sure you're asking, where have I been? To be very honest with you, when I changed my whole formula, because you may not have noticed, I changed my whole formula, I think late last year, January. And the idea was to talk on trending topics. Um, and yeah, and just kind of catch the trends and talk about them and give a psychological, um, spiritual insight, really. However, however, the, one of the biggest issues is, and I think my audience um, understand this, um, cause I've explained it. I am... This is not, when I say this is not me, what I mean is like my husband, right? He loves this, like he loves record. He loves this aspect of creativity. That's not me. That's not how my mind is creative. I find this stressful. Not sitting there and talking, uh, sitting down and talking is not stressful at all, but the planning about what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna record. I don't actually keep up with trends, but I do. It's weird. It's like I don't know what's happening, but I do not know. I do know what's happening. I don't actively look at blogs, but I do. Like if you see, you know, you look, never comment. So it would mean that I would have to be very much aware of what's happening around, and that takes a lot of energy. And I had energy in other places. That's what the biggest thing was that my energy was found in other places. So to put energy in making sure I'm all on top of trends, abreast of trends and then being very quick to respond to trends was the issue because I have to wear makeup. People might say, oh, you don't have to. I don't have an issue with wearing makeup. Everyone knows me, I go out without makeup. But I feel like for the camera, let me look a bit presentable. And in my head, I can only wear makeup if I'm going out. So like I've come out, I've come back from an event. So I feel like, yes, but to wear makeup just to record, I've done that a few times, but I rarely do that. And I just, don't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not that type of, I'm not that type of person that can literally just put makeup on to the record and then um, Bob your uncle, take it off. No, that's to me a waste of money. I have to kill <coughs> two birds with one stone. So now I have gone out. I just, every time I come back, I just can't bother to record. And I think when something is not fun to you or come easy to you, and then you've got other pressing issues, it, ends up being put on the back So a question that you might ask is then why are you doing this? The reason why I'm doing this is because when I decided to go on YouTube, it was because I was tired of short form content. I'm not really good at short form content. I'm better at long form content where I can just express myself, articulate my thoughts because um, as you might be getting to know me, I am, my, my mind goes at a very fast pace. <clears throat> Could be partly to do with my ADHD, but my mind just goes at a very fast pace. So I'm always catching up to my mind, but I'm also sometimes conceptualizing as I'm talking. So it is better for my editing team to capture really poignant points in a long form content, rather than me looking at the camera and trying to speak and say something meaningful in 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And at the time that I stopped doing short form content, I was tired of these dancing things. I was just tired of all of that. Like it wasn't me. So I thought, you know what? Long form content is better because again, I can express myself fuller. Um, it's a good way people to get to know you and then begin interested in you. And then whatever it is that I'm selling or, you know, whatever it was or is that I'm trying to get people to convert to, this is another way of building and nurturing that relationship. So it was also part of a strategic move. You see that a lot of people have podcasts because it could be monetary, profitable, that I wasn't really thinking that. There was always that potential but that wasn't like I'm doing this to become profitable directly from the podcast. It was, I'm doing this to bridge a gap to my um, audience so that they can get to know me and buy into me. So <clears throat> with that being said, I think I stopped being consistent just towards the end of March, no, beginning of March when I did my TEDx talk because I think the level of intensity that I was running at, I just got exhausted to do anything else, especially anything that I wasn't remotely 
interested in so let me make it clear i enjoy speaking i don't enjoy the process of speaking on camera i'm a born entertainer when i say that i mean that my personality anyone that knows me knows that i am at the life of the party but when i go on camera you just don't always see that you know you, you see the reverse of a lot of people they're introverts in real life but on camera they're giving you all of this but when you see them in real life you're thinking right like i don't get the camera personality and i have found that not saying it's true but i have found that a lot of people who are introverts in real life are very good at putting it on for the cameras and many of us that are like this in real life when the camera camera we're, we're looking all dull you start overthinking you don't you just don't become as normal right partly why i totally understand reality tv and i give them more grace on some people because i think i understand how i would be on camera i think i would be overthinking i'd be like i would also forget but then i would also overthink and it just depends <laughs> but you probably catch things i wouldn't want you to catch you catch facial expressions because i can't always hide i would be forgetting that there's a camera on anyway so where have i been i've been around i've been here and for those that have caught up so those in the audio you'll be hearing this maybe for the first time that i have co-founded a digital health tech and ed tech startup whoa wow oh my gosh uh-huh yes i have and what that basically means is that i've um <clears throat> i'm the ceo potentially of a unicorn i believe it's going to be a billion pound <laughs> but you know a billion pound um business and it's also going to be so impactful for the world um there's two black women at the helm and i just think that's such a amazing thing to say that there's going to be two black women who will create a product that we would create a service we would create a tech business that will transform workplaces so for those that don't know happy workers yeah so happy workers is um, the name of the new business and it is a mental health and career development platform that we are creating that is going to help businesses thrive it's going to help the employees have access to mental health support so on demand mental health support with experts so be it a psychotherapist be it a well social worker wants to get into america because you know in america social workers can be clinically trained but right now focus on the uk is predominantly going to be psychotherapists counselors psychologists um and coaches of all types so from well-being to health coaches to nutritionist coaches to coaches <laughs> coaches i was saying coaches coaches to financial coaches because there's five domains of mental health well-being or there's five domains of workplace well-being and that's physical health um emotional health uh, financial health social health and something else <laughs> health and you know when you think about the entire holistic person you can't separate work from personal i don't think you can even separate mental health from career development from career progression um this is all about how employees engage in the workplace it's all about how employees thrive in the workplace it's how it's all about how employees develop in the workplace and you know just engage in the workplace you know their productivity um levels etc etc how does that impact the culture of the workplace right how does leadership inspire those below them that is what happy workers is all about and i think i can say i know my team would definitely agree that they're happy so it makes sense that myself and my co-founder who's brilliant are at the helm of this because we've both experienced being unhappy in the workplaces and we've both experienced being happy in the workplaces we've both experienced our own mental health difficulties um from the workplace and we've both experienced seeking support from that so i think that it's time for someone like me and someone like her to come together she's data she's ai she's machine learning she's a technician i'm not i'm a what they call it a domain expert within mental health and psychotherapy i live it i breathe it <laughs> yeah we combine forces and we create something that isn't out there and it's really exciting daunting um sometimes nerve-wracking um but ultimately just purpose driven and meaningful a lot to learn because it's not like a business outside of, when you're in tech things are so fast they're accelerated um there's so much happening um there's so much chatter chatter if that makes sense right there's so much chatter everybody has an opinion about something so some people might say oh you, you know it's not so good for hr tech because again they might consider some people might consider what we do hr tech 
So even though you were health tech because of mental health and then ed tech because of the education that we're providing, providing education to develop your career, providing education to understand your mental well-being and understand how just life impacts you in the workplace. Um, but because we are plugged in to HR, you know, because it will provide a learning development platform and we're providing mental well-being and these are all, you know, key aspects of HR, it's not a good time for HR tech, supposedly. You, do you know what I mean? So, I'm saying, do you know what I mean? Like, you're, yeah, but do you know what I'm saying? Those that are listening. So, there's a lot of chatter around and all you can do is listen to the chatter, but sieve it and take what's necessary and just continue continue going on the path that you know you need to go on taking the correct advice get seeking the right mentors and making the right decisions small decisions over time that compound and compound and compound and that is what myself and my co-founder are doing we've done a lot like in the last eight to nine weeks it's only been that time frame but you wouldn't know that with what we have done because of the speed we have operated at because of god's favor and because of the amount of people that have come around to support us you know you know when you're doing something that god wants you to do when though it's not necessarily easy there's a smoothness to it i think i spoke about this in a previous video and the amount of people that are coming around and it's not that that needs to validate it. It's been validated already because me and my co-founder truly believe this is what we need to do. But it creates extra validation. It just reinforces what we already know, that this is the thing that we need to do. This is the thing that we need to embark on. So, yeah, watch this space. Um, I'll be coming to your screens near you. I don't know in what form. It could be in podcast forms again. Um, I'll be going on like more tech podcast forms once everything is out there and it's announced. I probably will be doing all of that. So <clears throat> thank you for rocking with me. You know, I haven't got much, um, but you guys are great. And those that will watch this in the future, hey, because <laughs> I get told or I watch your videos. And I think actually part of the reason why I thought, let me do a podcast again is because I haven't got numbers, look, not even a handful watch this, but there are key people that are watching us, speaking to a number of people, and they're like, oh, I've seen your videos. Not, not because they've randomly seen it, they've seen me on LinkedIn, and then maybe they've written my name, or somehow, somehow, they'll come across a video, and then they'll get to know me via my videos. It's just got me a trustee position. I don't know if I said to you, so thank you, YouTube. Um, I was kind of headhunted via my videos, via my content to, fill it, to be a trustee um and these videos somehow for some reason for some people really does cement i guess my expertise and i get to see who i am so i may not always be as consistent like i said i'm not at that position that i can be um because of the things that i've said then that means my my channel is not going to grow as it could so i really appreciate that and that's fine yeah um but i want to as much as possible um document document my experience like i said i want to document my experience as a black female founder you know i think i want to inspire women like myself that look like me especially because there's not many of us most of the events that i go to i'm the only one in the room like only black person in the room or only black female black person in the room if, I, if there's other black men which is rare but there, there are it's like raw cool and it doesn't mean that there isn't there's not like a number there is a number of us but we're not many but there is a number of us because i'm in different groups and there are black people there are black people in those groups but a lot of the events that i go to you don't really get to see that many you know so normally we gravitate towards each other towards at least the middle and the end because there is something about seeing people that look like you going girl i see your guy i see because we know how it is though not all skin folk or king folk you know but the reality is someone like me who doesn't see i have to say this because someone might hear that and just assume oh you're black you probably are you think a certain way which is fine you can think that way not every black person in the room who's aware that the only black person in the room is like oh my god i'm a victim of the only black person in the room no we're just aware of the reality that we are one of only sometimes the only and in some environments it's fine you don't feel it you just act and mingle like everyone else because it's just part of the process we live in a we live in the western world and it's predominantly white <laughs> like so i'm not surprised and i've grown up not growing up to be fair i grew up in multicultural areas and i went to a school that's very cultural i went to a school that's predominantly black but my courses from university and in my in work i've worked with a lot of white people i've been the only black woman black person so it's not something that i'm not i'm not unused to i think it's just in some environments it, you're acutely aware and may not be always race it could also be class you're like what mm. 
I'm, I'm a London girl here. I'm a, I'm a Hackney, Islington girl here. Now I'm a Croydon girl here. And sometimes it just is what it is, you know? Um, so the advice I would give to anyone that wants to start up is to start, reach out, seek help. I sought help. Like the amount of people I saw in the ecosystem in the first month was over 20, 30 people. The reason why I have the knowledge I have now, we'll take, I probably take the reason why we've taken the most gigantic leaps now is because I sought help. I'm entering into a space I have no idea about. I come from public sector, now I'm going to tech. Though I'm a second time founder, I'm, that business is different to this business because it's a tech business. Though the formula is what we're using, right? It's different. We're a different vertical, different structure, it's B2B, not B2C, so it's different. And tech is a different beast. <laughs> so, and the, the ability for it to scale is different. That's the biggest thing. Like the ability for this to scale is different. Yeah. The impact it can make on the higher level is different. So there was a lot to learn. I think one of my biggest strengths is that I, I admit my weaknesses. I'm not a person that sits there and looks at you and acts like I know what I don't know. If I don't know, I don't know. Because these events that I go to, sometimes they're speaking so much jargon, I have no idea. I have to research. So LTV, CAC, MMR. Like I'm still trying to understand because they say it and I get it. Like that could be me in any industry that I'm in. Sometimes you say jargon because I sometimes use jargon. Sometimes you just forget. And then two, because I don't want to assume you don't know. So I'm actually doing it the opposite where I'm using jargon because I don't want to be seen as patronizing. Like, do you know, do, do. oh, I know. I said, oh, okay, sorry, my bad. You don't, you, do you know what I mean? But actually in an event where you don't know where people are at, it will be good to break these down. But yeah. Then lastly, the only thing I don't like that is really hard, even though I'm an extrovert, is networking. Networking, networking, networking. Oh, how much I hate it, but how much I do it. It's crazy. There are moments and times that I'm, in my networking event you can really say that in a month i'm at a networking event at least once a week because it might be that one week i don't go but one week i do two or three so if you if you average it out i go to a networking event every week and it is tiring it's tiring because meeting multiple people at one time in an intense environment is tiring especially when some of the stakes are high what i mean by high is you're hoping to meet somebody of value um to you and you to them right you're hoping to maybe meet an investor that you chat up and you start beginning a conversation. You're hoping to meet founders within a similar vertical. You're hoping to meet founders who might become customers. <laughs> You're hoping to meet, and then also just to meet people. That's a lot of expectations. Not that I go there saying I need to meet a founder, I need to meet an investor, I need to meet the, the, the. But that's the whole point of networking is about expanding your network, right? Whether you get things directly or indirectly, that's the whole point of networking. The thing is, you're dealing with human beings that have different ulterior motives and have different energies. If you, do you know what I mean? They bring different things, right? And with a lot of networking, as I said, you're usually the only black person, or I'm usually the only black person, usually the only black per, um, black female in the room. Um, you know, every, some people from different classes and it's easy to write me off. Let me be very honest with you. I don't have a victim mentality at all, but I'm very aware, I'm very self-aware. So I, sometimes I'm very acutely aware of the environment that I'm in. I'm written off. Why? Because I'm probably not going to be an investor. So then you don't want to know me. You're probably unsure of what founder I am because very few black founders get to 100 million, 10 million, billion. Like let alone most people, like most startups fail. So then the ones that do predominantly do well are white, <laughs> white men. So females are underestimated or underserved. Black females are hugely underserved, underestimated. So the reality is the most served businesses or the most successful startup businesses are white male from a certain class of Silicon Valley or, you know, certain Cambridge, Oxford. That's just what we all, everyone knows that. So that's why even female founders, they call it, you know, underestimated founders or underserved founders. Um, the same as black females and all other types of minorities. So you, if that is the case that we are under, so doesn't mean we're, we're, we are, we are, we are um, less qualified. Doesn't mean that we are not good enough, right? It just means reality is, is that unfortunately a lot of funding does end up going to a certain bias all the time. Um, but because that is, it means that you will naturally sometimes be written off in an event just by people not being wanting to approach you. I don't know if that makes sense. A white guy 
who's looking for an investor is not going to see me and go, I want to speak to that person because they are looking for a person that they think is an investor. So when I went to an event, uh, I got friends with an older white guy and he's, we were just talking, he said to me that a lot of people are disappointed. I said, why? He said, because when I came in, a lot of people flocked to him because they assumed he's an older white guy. So he must be an investor. They were quite disappointed. But he's like, no, he's a founder. He's a CTO looking for a chief executive officer because he doesn't like, he's not into networking with this stuff. He just wants to create the tech. And that confirmed what I'm talking about. It confirmed the reality that you have to make quick decisions. So when you look at me, you're not going to assume I'm anything other than you probably would assume I'm a founder. And, but if that's not what you're looking for, because most people are looking for investors at some of these events. If you are going to these events, and you're looking for founders, you're looking for potential clients or open doors to other people. So that's just the reality of it. And because that is that, but I'm aware of that, it does make it tiring because you're aware of something and you're still hoping for something within that limitation. So yes, when I meet people at events, I probably always end up meeting only two or three quality people because of those factors that I'm talking about, right? Because you can meet, talk to different people, but it's about if they're interested, if they care, you know, I'm very good to clock if you're not bothered or you don't care, or there's just nothing organic. Because sometimes I meet somebody who's got an amazing business, they can say I'm a textile startup. I say I'm a mental health career. They're like, oh, that's amazing. That's it. It ends up amazing because they have nothing to add to it. Or they just say, oh, it's really important now, isn't it? And then that's it, right? So it's like, okay, what do I do with that? I'm not going to make converse from a stone there's no need like i know why we're all here so let's do oh let's connect but we don't really connect because we don't actually exchange contacts or we do knowing we're not going to really connect you know how it is but i find that tiring because i find those type of environments soul sucking rather than nourishing i think my ideal networking event would be a networking event that is silly what i mean by silly is i went to an event last year and um, i was actually speaking at the event so that makes it easier when you do speak at the event, people come to you. Um, but they did a thing where they put people in the middle, standing, and then the rest of us danced around them. And whenever the music stopped, we quickly had two, three minutes to talk about ourselves. And I found that, yes, it might be, people might think this is stupid, that, oh my God, I just don't want to dance, I don't want to do all of that. But I personally found that the best networking event I've gone to in a very long time because we actually engaged, the defenses were down and it wasn't about, you're your investor it was just like let's just connect and just talk to people you know i'm not an introvert but in some of these network events i might feel like an introvert because i am very polite i'm I, look that is weird if i want something for somebody else i will go to a person you can you know how it is you can do more for others so if someone goes i want to do that person but i'm shy I'm like, let's go but when it's for myself i'm like oh i don't know <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Right? So I guess that's how life is. But, you know, sometimes I just say, I need to talk to that person, that person, and that's it. So I do challenge myself. I usually I give myself um, key metrics that I need to achieve at an event. And once I achieve that, I'm satisfied. It could be, oh, that person I've been wanting to speak to, I've messaged on LinkedIn, they ain't gotten back to me, so let me speak to that person. That's what I've got for the whole night because I think if I put too much on myself, it becomes suffocating. So I don't know if people get that. There's a lot more I can say about network events. I actually hate them. I go to them because you have to, you, but you do get a return on investment. Like the people that I've met from network events for the last year and a bit, I started re-networking this time last year. They've supported me in the business. They've done different people, done different things for this happy workers right now to say it was a return on investment. Was it immediate? No, it wasn't like immediately after I met them last year, things are happening. But now that I'm calling upon them, they're like, girl, we're ready, whatever you need. Mainly because I also gave. I'm a giver. When I meet somebody, I give. That's a tip that I give you. Do not go to these events and then take. Give first. I try to give first. I'm constantly thinking when I meet somebody, how can I support you? How can I help you? Because I'm generous in giving, majority of the people that I meet have no issue in being generous giving back because I gave first. Now, some people give first to me, but maybe they can just tell from my spirit that I am a giver. I give. I don't see, I don't see to take. I prefer not to take from you anyways, but I'm a giver. So I would give that biggest, biggest advice, right? And lastly, I'll say this. I heard, this, heard someone say this as well. Um, incorporate self-care within this process because it is tough. It's brutal. I haven't even had the brutalness yet. I've had a small snippets of it, but I haven't had those major punches or rejections yet. So boy, when them times come, oh, 
I be boiling on my knees, boiling on my knees, hey, boiling on my knees, boiling on my knees, hey. And it will come, like, it's part of it. The, the rejections, the like, some people are more arsy about it, like, oh, this is rubbish. Some people are more like nice about it. The point is, rejections will come. It's part of the process. And I think, am I ready for it? I don't know. I can only, ha- <laughs> when it comes, it comes. But I celebrate the stuff, the good stuff when they do come as well. You know, when the good, when the good stuff come, I celebrate that. I can go on. I re- it's weird. I can talk about this for longer. I probably should do more videos. I think it's just, like I said, I have to think of a name, think of a title. I have to kind of think of a particular topic. I have to feel like I've got enough energy to talk about it on the camera, not waffle on and go off. That's why you don't see me. And I'm not going to sit down and promise. Like I said, I have not put the effort into this as I could put into a business. You have to put, podcast has to be a business. You have to see it like it's an actual startup. I ain't going to do that. Not at this moment. Maybe later, maybe not. Um, but I will be, I will pop videos. Not all the time, but I will I'll pop all videos because I gain, I won. People want to hear it. People have asked. Two, people listen to this. It's a really good opportunity to get to know me. Um, and it will, it will, it will bring a return on investment. I may not be putting much in it, <laughs> but it will eventually bring a return on investment, you know? So, um, yeah, that's me. My name is Inga Z, over and out and over and out. Ooh, what an amazing show. If I may say so myself. Well, thank you for listening to the Inga Z Kadma Show podcast. So, for all of you women of faith and all of you women who are listening week after week and resonate with what I'm talking about, feel lost, feel uncertain, know they're called for something greater, but they're currently stuck in what is comfortable. They're stuck in the familiar. And you honestly want to get out of that. You want to be all that God has created you to be. Sis... I got you covered. Yeah. I've got an amazing, amazing mentorship that I provide um, to women of faith like yourself to help them level up, essentially equip them with the skills that they need to fulfill their assignment on earth and to shift their mindset, to shift their mindset, have a complete metanoia, have a complete transformation. So, If that sounds like something you're interested in, click the link on the website and yeah, follow the instructions and I can't wait to see you in the community. So like, share, subscribe, (laughs) that's YouTube, but for the podcast lovers, download it, share it, you know, tweet it, review it, all of that good stuff and I shall see you in the next podcast.